All right, so I'm Luke, I'm 17 and I'm a junior. And something I've been doing is to, well, to keep saying is playing basketball a lot. I have a hoop outside my house and I'm out there like three, four hours a day just putting up shots. I'm Abby, I'm 14, but I turned 15 in like a month. <laughs> and I've been cooking and baking a lot and going on bike rides and like FaceTiming friends bunch. And then I still have dance classes on Zoom every night, which is interesting, but yeah. And your mom's a teacher, right? Yes. How's she, how's she doing? Um, it's getting better. She was kind of frustrated in the beginning, just trying to figure out everything, but she's figuring it out and so am I. And then my dad works at a hospital, but he's not like, really in it all he does like other stuff so he's doing good too that's good i'm glad to hear that mr garcia you want to introduce yourself to our facebook live audience yeah hey guys uh my name is anthony garcia i'm the broadcast and graphic design teacher at cedar park uh it's been a lot of fun trying to actually figure out how to get to do broadcast from home and um, the graphic design kids been working on their resumes um, and just personally been trying to get outside, reading some more, finally some books that have been stacking up. But mostly what I feel like I've been doing is listening to a lot of music and trying to find some good stuff to listen to as I work from home and it's nice, so. One of the things that was um, very impressive to me, you know, where CTE might be a little bit different for everybody because you all are so hands-on, but you guys are still doing a broadcast. What's that been like? Uh, it, you know, it came out after just a few days when we found out we were gonna be coming back and just talking to the kids and, they really were all about it and just getting a chance to get back in the grind and occupy their time and really just do what they love, which is, you know, telling stories of students in the community, but then also making some entertaining lighthearted segments as well to kind of just take the edge off. And so it was um, hard, but thanks to the technology we have like Google Drive and, you know, Zoom, it actually was a lot easier than it probably looks like. What, why and how did y'all decide that you still wanted to do a broadcast and like what went into, you know, just figuring out how to do it remotely? Um, I think we kind of all just had, like worked together was the main thing. And we had um, every, on our Monday meetings, we kind of like set our schedule for the week and we like plan when stuff needs to be due. And then like the producers are really helping us out. Like if you just, like if you text them, they'll usually help you out. So just like working together and like, checking on each other and just like helping each other out with everything that we might need. So how's it different from your normal show? It sounds like a lot of it, just collaboration, working with producers and some of your senior leadership. But like what has been, what has been really different other than just being at home? Probably, probably the difficulty of since at school, we have computers with editing programs on it and we've had to learn how to adapt with, phone programs such as like downloading Photoshop or not Photoshop, uh, Adobe Premiere on your phones and learning how to edit on what seems to be like a completely new software. So we've been able to adapt with that and it's coming out very good. The Wolfcasts we've been making are very nice and it's probably some of our best Wolfcasts that we've made. What do you think has been, so we've been doing these live broadcasts and I think the hardest part has been just to hit like tone, right? Like what is the appropriate people are, um, you know, this is such a serious situation for so many people and it, we're all in this together, but it impacts us all differently. So have you all had any conversations about like what tone and content should look like? And what, what were those discussions like? Yeah, well, from the beginning, we had already kind of been operating um, from like a perspective, like, in, in a traditional newscast, you have blocks, like an A block, which is your first one, B and C and so on. And you put the more serious stuff at the top and the lighthearted stuff at the end. And so um, we decided we're gonna split an even A and B block with an A block focusing on news, um, hard information, the facts, and then the B block focusing on some of our more lighthearted segments. And even with those ones, um, when we first came back, we kind of pulled away from the humor and more of the entertainment, but like things that are helpful to know. So our sports director, doesn't have a lot of sports to cover. So she transitioned into a new segment called Active with Addie. And she was just going over different ways to stay active at home in your own house and ways to be creative and stuff like that. And then we have another segment uh, called Cooking with Claire that they're doing on just some easy things you can cook at home with just ingredients you have. So we took what we were already doing 
retooled it a little bit. But then this last week, we kind of did start bringing back a little bit more humor and trying to balance that. But you guys can speak to that as well if y'all want. Addie, or Abby did a, a segment as well of just stuff to do around the house. Yeah, and then also one of our, like, normal segments, three things, is usually just, like, information that's happening, but we made it now where it's, like, three good things that, like, aren't with coronavirus <laughs> to kind of just, like, distract people and, like, show that there are good things still happening. And so um, I've done that a couple times and so have other people, and it's nice because you can just, like, not talk about it for once. <laughs> So, yeah. Have y'all noticed that any more, any different, like, people watching or engaging with your content? Yeah, I, I mean, it's hard to tell because the views on our videos are up, like, for our full show tremendously. But then again, you know, you don't have one teacher showing it to a classroom of 30 kids. So those 30 kids are probably, or some of them are watching on their own clicks. And so um, I do think, though, parents are a lot more interested as well. And even students that probably weren't, um, very interested to begin with are kind of curious now what's going on and kind of realizing that you know they have this personalized fo personal focus kind of on their community and their age group newscast ready to tell them what's going on and what they need to know. One of the segments we added was district decisions which kind of breaks down some of the emails you guys send out and says okay we don't care what the elementary schools are doing we don't care what the middle schools are doing or what this is about what does that you know have to say about the students at Cedar Park High School and so we really try to dissect that and just pull out what they need to know. So I think people are realizing that they can come to us for that translated information. So I imagine um, Luke as a junior, one of those one of those items was the grading system. Um, when we had to change the, we decided to put in a new temporary grading system change. Um, how did y'all go about communicating that and, and um, what was kind of the reaction that you heard from from students about the temporary decision to do passing oh complete. well after going with the same grading system since like middle school it was very kind of tough and kind of a lot of students didn't really understand how uh the new grading system would be in place and i think how teachers kind of explained it i've got a lot of emails from teachers like the week that it was the grading to the new grading system was sent and they've been really helpful in communicating these kind of new uh, rubrics into our uh, curriculum. And I think they've been, yeah, very helpful. I think it's like easier for the teachers and like for us, especially because we can't like ask some questions. Well, we can, but like it's a lot harder to like clarify assignments and like go over like really in-depth things a lot. And so like I personally like it, but I think um, – with like, if you don't do your work, then it like can affect your whole year. I think that could be like communicated a little better because I think some people are just kind of like not really doing anything and then it's like gonna affect them later. Mm -hmm. So I think it hurts people in that way, but. <laughs> do y'all feel like that's a thing with your peers? Do you feel like overall, there's a lot of students who just aren't engaged at all or what, what does that look like? I mean, in high school, we think, I mean, y'all are a lot more in, uh, independent than elementary school kids and even middle school students. Um, but what do you think just of your peers, not naming names, has been like the take to online learning? I'd say most of my friends, we're all pretty much doing our work. I mean, there's like a couple of people I know who aren't doing it all. But for the most part, I think a lot of people are. I think a lot of people are also bored. So it's like, what else can you do? Like, <laughs> Luke, what would you say has been working really well in remote learning? Like, what is one thing, if we have to continue doing this for a long period of time, like, what's one thing that you'd say we need to make sure we keep doing? Um, I think teachers need to keep pushing out, like, videos and tutorials. And I think I haven't seen a lot of Zoom meetings with teachers recently. Like, like the, the first couple weeks, it was we'd have a Zoom meeting. I, I would have, like, four Zoom meetings meetings a week and they just like introduce our curriculum but right now it's just like they're uh pushing stuff on google classroom and there's not really like there's office hours but i think having set zoom meetings for different uh lessons would be more helpful what do you think abby yeah i think like you said at least just having like one a week because I know for broadcast, since we have that one, it kind of just like sets us up for the week and like we know exactly what we're doing and like what we should be doing. But then like other classes, I think 
people can just kind of get sort of lost. And so I think if we had like one a week on like Monday and Tuesday, it would like set us up for the week. We could ask our questions. And I think it'd make, make it a lot easier, especially if I had to do this lo a lot longer. What would y'all want somebody to know, Luke? Um, so say I'm a member of the community, I don't have any kids, or I don't have a high school student. What would you want them to know about just kind of what your experience is right now? There's a lot of discussion about you know, reopening the economy, like starting to, to move things around. Um, what does it look like for, what would you want them to know from a student's perspective about what your experience has been with digital learning and the situation we're in being a teenager during you know, a global pandemic? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's very hard to explain because it's so different, it's so abstract. And um, I'd say it's just like every, everything, this whole kind of pandemic hit very abruptly and not a lot of people knew how to react. And um, I feel like uh, it's just adapting. It's just a lot of adapting, just going with the flow and whatever uh, news comes out, we're all eating it up and just trying to understand this thing more. Last time we, we talked to a student a couple weeks ago and she mentioned that she recently got a job at a grocery store, but I didn't even think is that something you're seeing friends do now? Um, yeah, one of uh, another reporter, Amelia, did a package on students working in grocery stores, and I think a lot of them had worked there before, but then I think some more have like recently started working there doing all this. I was gonna. Some of them are working limited hours now because some of the stores were cutting back hours for the younger kids to allow the older families that need a little bit more you know, to support their, their income is, it's a primary income to, to take a little bit more hours than the kids were taking. As a high school teacher, Mr. Garcia, what would you want, you know, just Texas to know about what teachers are going through right now? Like, I'm, I don't think you probably ever imagined having to run broadcast classes remotely. Um, I know that um, your experience might be different than like an English teacher or a math teacher, but still being in a community, being in a high school, it's got to be a lot different. What would you want people to know about? I, I mean, I would want people to know that even though there are a lot of challenges, I think that this whole, this whole pandemic has shown that there's a lot of fat in education. And by that, I just mean like extra stuff that should be trimmed off of, you know, just the way that we do things that kind of, um, just make things more complicated than they need to be that aren't as essential as they seem to be. Um, and so cutting through that red tape and just giving us access to things the way we've been able to get access to um, and a lot more trust than I think we had in the past to just run our classes has been awesome. Um, so that's the pros to me is I think hopefully this will reveal how much of what we were doing before was probably unnecessary or our focus was maybe on things that it shouldn't have been on and that a lot of stuff can just... Uh, an email than a meeting uh so i've just learned that you know we've we've kind of focused on more specifically on what, what we should be focusing on which is the students and their essential learning it seems like forever but we're getting through it and we're doing it effectively and by showing that we've been able to um, keep this class afloat and still be able to do our work without the uh the tools we have at school. And I think just the idea of that is shown how powerful this bond between teacher and student is. Luke, the real question I want to ask you in four weeks, whose hair is longer? Oh, mine, mine or definitely. Yours? I haven't gotten a haircut in about way before coronavirus even hit. So I, these locks are growing. 